This is a bit of a detour from our normal upland or market content here, but we're going to be, well, I guess kind of sort of. We're still talking about a cryptocurrency, but we're going to be looking at the Wax blockchain, and we're also going to be looking at the Atomic Hub and also the Anchor Wallet. Now, if this is something that you've been playing Upland with for a little while, you may have noticed this, but down at the bottom, the three little dots, you'll see the portal function here. And inside portal, there's Upland collectibles. But if you haven't set up the Wax Wallet or Atomic Hub or anything else, you're not going to have any access to that. And if you've tried to set it up and you're not very familiar with crypto, you've probably had one heck of a headache. Hey there, John Henry here, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome, my friend. I hope to earn your like and subscription today. With the Wax Wallet and all of that stuff, I mean, if you manage to get it set up properly, it can be a huge amount of fun. It can be incredibly profitable. It can be a great way to transact for your business. It can be so many things. But getting it connected correctly can be a little bit of a step. And if you don't know how to do it and you mess it up, it can cause all kinds of headaches that nobody wants to deal with. So what the heck is Wax, right? What is Atomic Hub? What is Anchor? What are all these things that we're talking about? How in the world do we get it set up properly so that we don't have all of these different headaches? I mean, look, I get it, right? When you click on the link in Upland, it slams a bunch of info down your throat like you've read the Bitcoin white paper when it was published, all right? A lot of folks aren't coming at crypto like that. A lot of folks play this because it's a game and they have no idea what crypto's even about or what Wax is about or linking anything totally out of what they're using to and this can be incredibly confusing so let's clear a little bit of the confusion up and try to make this a bit easier so wax along with a lot of other cryptos in this kind of sphere if you will uh, is a peer-to-peer -peer blockchain network that has its protocol initially built around e-commerce now it's its purpose is to be an e-commerce rep in that it's faster it's easier it's safer all of the things that every e-commerce business wants to hear when they're talking about transactions right but the wax blockchain is so much more than that there's so much here when it comes to wax You'll notice a lot of the sponsors and things that are going on with Wax do tend to be more on the gaming or music side of things. You've got AMC Theaters, Weezer, Funko, Mattel, Street Fighter, Bratz. Upland is on this list as well, maybe not right here, uh, but these are the types of things that you can expect to see on this, and they do a lot of gaming, and there's some blockchain, you know, services and such, but a lot of it is more centric around the e-commerce side of things, gaming, and I mean, you can see it, all of the, all of the tags here make it pretty straightforward as to what their targeted audience is. The Wax blockchain operates on what's called a delegated proof of stake or a DPoS consensus mechanism, and it's backward compatible with the EOS blockchain. That's a lot of fancy words, but to make it simple, Upland operates on the EOS blockchain. Wax is backward compatible with the EOS blockchain. Therefore, we can connect those two together and make a happy little marriage, right? That's why we can go into Upland and use the Upland portal and get all of these assets back and forth. You can have a lot of different Wax wallets for a lot of different stuff. You can have a Wax wallet specifically for one type of game. You can have it for just gaming and another wallet for collections and art, whatever. But one of the things that you're going to see when it comes to the Wax blockchain and kind of the concept of it is like renting a, a blockchain computer, so to speak. You're renting its resources. There's CPU, there's net, there's RAM. These are the things that you have to have if you're going to be utilizing the blockchain in the most effective way possible. Now, if you're just using the Wax blockchain to buy collections and hold on to the collections and not really do much else, you're not doing any gaming or anything else, then you're not going to need a whole lot of these resources. That said, if you're holding a lot of collections or you are doing some gaming and stuff, you're going to want to make sure to pump some of these up. One of the big ones that a lot of assets are going to go into is RAM and the other is CPU. CPU is when you're doing actions. So if you're doing in-game actions, a game, as you can see in the background there, I've got some Waxel Ninjas. Every time I do an action in the Waxel Ninja game, it requires some resources from the blockchain network. So I have 50 Wax staked in my blockchain wallet here, and you can see that it's 73% used, and it's just sitting here. Right, that's because I've got my miners out mining. I've got my carpenters out carpenting, <laughs> whatever, you know. So they're taking up resources. As they finish, my resources will start to go down. Now, if I've got more miners than I have resources, I'm not going to be able to use them all. So you've got to make sure that you pump up your resources enough if you're using it for the gaming side of things. 
from the collection side of things for me personally i mean wax is incredibly cheap right now so to me it would make sense to throw 10 wax in each one and just see what you end up needing as you're going through if you run into issues or anything like that it'll warn you what you need more of and then you can just go into the wallet and pump it up from there so let's go into getting things set up properly. And the first thing that we're going to need is the Anchor Wallet. The easiest way to get this Anchor Wallet is on your phone and on desktop. And I would recommend doing both personally. That's what I have. Um, but you can head over to graymass.com and go under the Projects tab and find Anchor Wallet. When you do that, it'll bring you over here and you can get it for your desktop and your mobile. For me personally, just as an FYI, I did the one on mobile first, and I found it to be a little bit easier to set it up that way. That said, setting it up on your mobile or desktop, honestly, I, it's a necessity to have it on mobile because a lot of the functionality, the locking, the access prompts, and all of that kind of stuff is done on mobile. So you scan the QR code, you swipe it, and then you're good. So you definitely need the mobile app. The desktop is an optional one, but I do find it incredibly useful to have and something that I would definitely recommend. I will throw a forewarning out for you though. Setting up a Wax Wallet with Anchor does have a $1.99 charge. I know, it seems like, oh my god, really? Like they're nickel and diming us. But here's the thing. When you're setting up a Wax Wallet, you need to set things up and initialize it with a minimum of five Wax to begin with anyway. So if you were going to go in and manually do it yourself, if you don't set it up properly with the five Wax, you're going to set yourself up with a mess of problems to begin with right out of the gates. By doing it this way, all of that stuff is taken care of, so you don't have to deal with all the headaches and all the other garbage. I'm a big fan of that, and for two bucks, mm-hmm. After you download the app to your phone and get it all installed, you can go in and get the application for your computer as well and get that going. Now, I, like I said, created my wallet on my phone first. I found that to be a little bit easier because it's got all of my biometrics and everything else. It's just a lot easier to set it up that way for me personally. You might find it easier to do it on your desktop first. Either way, uh, if you're not going to be using the desktop at all, you might just completely skip that step. Regardless, however you're going to be using it, you are going to need the mobile version, so I would just start there. After you create your account on the mobile side of things, it's going to ask to send your key certification information. You're going to need that if you're going to be setting up your desktop info. So this is public info. It's not like you have to like hide it and write it down somewhere. It's not like that. This is your key certification info. You can send that to your email. Not a big deal. What is important that you don't want to go sharing to everybody is the list of six words that will come after that key certification info you're going to need that too. Make sure not to lose any of that incredibly important information because you're gonna need that to import it into the desktop. Once you've got the desktop wallet installed, then you'll have to go through the import process. Basically, you're taking the info from your phone and you're linking it to your desktop so they can communicate back and forth with one another. Makes it super, super handy and something that, again, isn't necessary, but I would recommend doing. You're going to need to go into import an existing account and then you're going to use your key certificate down here. That's the thing that you emailed to yourself. All you got to do is copy paste that number in there and then you're going to need those six words. You'll type those in. It takes like... I don't know, mine took like two or three minutes to link, but after you get all the certification info in, your six words in, get that all linked, takes about three minutes and you'll have it all linked together and you're ready to rock and roll. Super easy from there. So now that we've got our Anchor wallet set up, we've got our wallet set up on our phones, we've got our wallet set up on our desktop, we've got everything linked together and we're good to go there. Now we need to actually use it, right? So what we can do is head over to wax.atomichub.io. I know it's a little bit of a, of a mouthful, but this is the Atomic Hub. This is where all of the NFTs and everything is taking off. So what you want to do is go to log in in the top right. Now, a lot of folks, and this is where a lot of people realize that they've made an incredible mistake because they're just going to go into the cloud wallet and make a cloud wallet and go from there. But the problem with the cloud wallet is you don't have access to any of your private keys. By setting it up on Anchor, we have access to all of our key certificates. We have, we can change them. We can modify anything that we want, and it's all ours. Incredibly important when we're talking about crypto, especially with all the other stuff going on right now. Wax is incredibly stable. I haven't heard any issues with Wax. I haven't experienced any issues with Wax. I'm not saying it will, but what I'm saying is from the perspective of safety, you're usually better off making sure that the assets are actually yours and not sitting on an exchange, right? So what we want to do here is choose Anchor from the list because that's what we've set up. 
what this is going to do is it's going to pop up a QR code and this is what you use with your phone. So you'll go into your Anchor app and when you have your Anchor app, all you need to do is go in and scan the QR code. So the QR code, that'll be right on the main main thing here and I don't know how much you can see it, but you'll click right there and that will open up the camera. And then we'll take the camera, we'll scan our QR code and it's going to say, hey, do you want to log in? Right, so I'll go in and I'll say, yep, I do wanna log in, I'll confirm. And this is why I like the phone one. I can use my thumbprint and it confirms with biometrics and now we're logged in. So we're logged into my SSFTG.GM Wax account and we've got that all locked and loaded. And I did it all from my phone, successfully logged in. Really, really cool that we've set it up that way because now when I click my name in the top corner, I can go into my inventory and I can see all of the different things that I can have in here. You can see I actually already have, actually you might not be able to see my head's in the way. I'm getting self-conscious about my head, I don't know why, but uh, you can see that I've got a couple Upland collectibles. These are the Upland cards and this is the cool thing about that backward compatibility. Now, if you just loaded up your wax wallet, you might not have any wax, right? You might not have any way to actually purchase these because if I go to Upland Cards as an example and I wanna see this on the market, if I sort this by list and I sort price lowest just to see what's here, like cool, right? Okay, that's awesome, it's, it's 18 cents. That's great, right? Can you see that? Yeah, it's 18 cents, it's one and a half wax. But if I have zero wax, that's useless, right? I don't have any way to purchase these. And some of these are really freaking cool, right? So how would I go about purchasing these? Right? If I wanted to buy this, how do I buy this one? Where do I do that? Now, this is where we're gonna have to load up some wax, right? Now we can do this really, really simply, and this is why I love Atomic Hub. And you can do this in the cloud wallet as well. I'm just not a huge fan of the cloud wallet because of Anchor and the way that it sets up and all the problems that you run into if you do it that way, but I digress. Uh, we're gonna need some wax, and to load some wax up, it's really, really easy. Click the drop down in the top right corner and go to buy tokens. When we go into buy tokens, you can use Banksa or Exchange, and Exchange is more along if you're familiar with how crypto exchanges work work. If you've used crypto exchanges and you know how transferring crypto and all of that works, definitely go this way because it's going to save you some money. You're going to pay fees if you're using other services. That's how services work, right? That's why they exist because they charge fees. So if you already have an account with Binance or Bittrex or Qcoin or uh, Huobi, go over there and just buy WaxP over there, transfer it into your Wax wallet. You're good to go easy peasy. But we're assuming that people don't know how to do that. That's the whole point of this video, right? So we're going to need to buy some the old-fashioned way with good old Mr. Credit Card. So what we're going to do is go up and click on Banksa, and then we'll click on Yes, Proceed. And then from here, if you've never done this before, this is going to bring you through the verification process. And with the verification process, you're going to want to create an order. You can type in how much you want. In this case, let's say that I wanted to do 50 bucks, which I believe is the minimum, if I'm not mistaken here. Let me, tr let me try something. Let me do 30. Yeah, so the minimum is $50. So the minimum for this to work is 50. Uh, again, it's cheaper to do it on an exchange, but let's just throw $50 in here and keep it there. Now you'll notice you're going to receive 401.803. What the heck? Why such a crazy number? Well, there are a few things that you have to consider in this. Yes, there are fees. You're paying gateway fees. There are no network fees. And honestly, you're only paying 50. You're not paying any more than that. You're just getting $49.02 worth of wax because of the fees. That's actually not that bad when you consider some of the other services and the fees that are associated with it. I mean, a dollar fee, <laughs> that's not bad at all if you ask me. But I digress. We'll go in a little bit further. Remember that wax is a cryptocurrency. That means that the price will fluctuate. $50 today might get you 401.8 wax. But if we look at the wax chart, if wax goes up to 20 cents, well, that $50 isn't going to get you those 400 coins anymore. This has a variable price. This is not like Upland's UPX that's always pinned to a dollar. No, this has a actual value intrinsically associated with it. So you want to make sure that you know what you're doing on this side of things too. Buy low, sell high, right? If you need any info on how trading works or anything like that, we've got a full trading course over at SSFTG.com that's got 20 plus hours of video course material on how trading works, getting into trades, executing trades, and all of that stuff. So if you're interested in that side of things, a little bit of cross promo here, head on over to SSFTG.com and check out the Day Trading Academy.
But from here, all we've got to do is load up. We can buy 50 bucks worth. And when you create your first order, like I said, they're going to ask you to do a couple verification things. And a lot of it will be done with your phone. They'll text you a message. And through there, they'll have you take a selfie of yourself. They'll take a picture of your ID and all that because there is KYC regulations. That's how it all works, right? If you want to avoid that, you use an exchange. <laughs> the services, right? You got their, their upfront and behind the scenes fees that you have to pay knowingly or unknowingly by using these services. And KYC is one of those things. So if you want to avoid KYC or you want to keep that anonymity going, then going the exchange route is something that you've probably already done anyway. Now, like I said, this isn't the only way to buy wax. It's not the cheapest by any means. There are some fees. Those fees are pretty negligible, all things considered, when you compare it to other currencies. But that said, there are better ways to get a hold of this. If you have the Crypto.com app, you can buy it right on the app and transfer it in. You can buy it on Binance. You can buy it on Huobi and the exchanges. That's going to save you a lot in some of these exchange fees. And then you can buy however much you want. Not everybody wants to come in and dump 50 bucks into something that they don't even know if they're going to use. But if you've got $5 or something on Binance that you can chuck in here, really easy to get taken care of. And that way, if you do something wrong or you mess something up or you transfer it the wrong way, you're only out five bucks. A lot of people approach this mentality that way, and we can see that in the pricing. 18 cents for some of these things is incredibly cheap, and it allows a lot of people to get involved at a really low price. So now that we've got our Wax wallets, our Anchor wallets all set up, they're connected to the Atomic Hub. We might even have some new Wax if we bought some with a credit card. You might even have some Upland collectibles that are burning a hole in your pocket. Now what do we do with them, right? Well, we've got to connect them into Upland. Really easy to do, but remember... Upland operates on the EOS blockchain, not Wax. So we've got to connect those two blockchains together, right? Now, on the surface, the way that this operates, you go into the three dots at the bottom, you go into Portal, and then you can choose Upland Collectibles. From the Upland Collectibles, you won't have any addresses in your list. I've got my SSFTG.GM account here, and I've also got my burner wallet that I was recording before and trying to get that going too. Um, but what you're going to have is the plus button here to click Add Address. And when you add the address, you're going to be presented with this window here, and it's going to give you a, a different code, obviously, but a code. And this is where on the surface, it seems really simplistic, right? Like, okay, well, I type this code in, the other blockchain looks for the code and it says, oh yeah, there it is. That's the account done. Cool, right? Easy peasy. On the surface, it sounds easy. And in reality, the actual function is, but when you click on this link right here, all of a sudden, all of that easy mentality goes out the window. Like, whoa, what the heck am I looking at, right? So let's break this down a second here so that we can kind of make this simple again. When you click on that link, what it's doing is it's bringing you over into blocks.io, which is an area that you can push different pieces into the blockchain. So as an example, I can take my little note that I put this code on, 83854. I take that note, I put it into the blockchain. That's effectively what we're doing here. So you want to copy this code. It's been copied to the clipboard. Go back over into this and click on verify if it hasn't already been selected. That should be auto selected for you. Make sure that my head's not in the way. Let me move this over here like this. There we go. Uh, so you'll click on verify. And then when you click on that, you're going to see enter data and a challenge. This is where you're typing in that number. So you put that number in here and you click submit transaction. Now, here's the thing. If you haven't logged into blocks.io yet, I already am. So if I do this, it's just going to push the transaction through. But if you haven't logged in yet, you're not going to see an account in the top right corner. So when you click submit transaction, it's going to ask you to log in. Just grab your phone, scan the QR code with the anchor wallet, approve it, and you're good to go. After that, you haven't sent the transaction through. This is where people get messed up because they think, oh, I logged in, now it's done, right? No. You just logged in. Now go back in again, make sure that number is there and submit the transaction, right? Actually put the transaction through. You're going to have to go into the app again, scan the code, approve the transaction from your phone, and then it'll push it onto the blockchain. After it's been put onto the blockchain, that's when you're going to get the notice on the Upland side of things that says, yep, it's on the blockchain, it's good to go. It takes like three, four minutes or so. You'll get a notification in game and then you'll see your wallet right from the drop down list. The cool thing is once it's in the drop down list, you can select your wallet and you can transfer your assets in now. So from here, now that we're all ready to go and everything is locked and loaded, to begin, all we have to do is go into your inventory on the Atomic Hub, that's where I had those Upland cards, and you can select the asset that you want to bring into Upland by clicking on the More 
and transfer options, right? And that will allow us to transfer things over. You will need to include the Upland Portal Wax address and sign in using your Anchor wallet. You can use Scatter as well. We used Anchor. Now, that's why it's so important and why we set everything up with Anchor right out of the gates because everything else uses Anchor. You're saving yourself a lot of headaches. This is where a lot of folks who set up a cloud wallet are realizing, oh no, I've made a huge mistake. It becomes a little bit of a headache. You don't want to deal with that. So this will begin the transfer process and your NFT should appear in the Upland Asset Wallet shortly. And the WAX address for Upland is really straightforward. It's just Upland Portal. Really, really easy to do from there. And then you can import all of your assets. It's super awesome. So just like that, we've gone from having absolutely no clue what WAX is and, and what like what atomic, atomic what? What is that? We've gone from no clue what any of those things are to having a fully set up phone anchor wallet that we can also communicate to our desktop wallet, that we can also link to our browser, that we can scan and make transactions from. We've basically set everything up all in the span of this video. So give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back, especially if you're not very tech savvy because there's a lot that just happened. Now you can log into Atomic Hub, you can buy NFTs, you can buy collectibles, you can look at other play to earn games if you're interested in those. You can do all kinds of stuff. Really, really awesome. And now everything's connected and ready to rock and roll. I hope this guide helps you getting things set up. I know it's not easy. I know there's a lot of steps to it, but if it did help you out, make sure to drop a link, uh, a like on the video, drop a comment below and let us know that it helped. If you have any issues along the way, of course, drop those in the comments below. And if you have anything else that you want to talk about, I always love hearing from you all. Drop that in the comments too. Until the next one, that's going to do it. Rest up, enjoy, and we will see you all in the metaverse. Thanks.